Welcome to the historic Quaker village of Jordans, deep in the Buckinghamshire countryside. The village proper lies down a road with an earlier allusion to religious practices, Seer Green Lane, and it is a picturesque place with a large village green and a quaint little shop selling all manner of necessities, including, fittingly, Quaker Oats porridge. But at the other end of the lane, and along a fairly busy road, is a mysterious and now privately owned barn with a fascinating history. The barn, which dates to around the early 17th century, now lies toward the front of a private estate and appears unremarkable, but it was once at the centre of a media sensation. This furore, which saw visitors flock to the site from as far afield as the United States, was because an Englishman, James Rendell Harris, had claimed to have discovered within it the last resting place of the Mayflower. The Mayflower was the English ship that transported a group of English families, religious outcasts, that became known to history as the Pilgrim Fathers from England to the New World in 1620. After a gruelling ten-week voyage, the Mayflower, with 102 passengers and a crew of about 30, reached America, dropping anchor near the tip of Cape Cod, Massachusetts, on November 21, 1620. The American national holiday of Thanksgiving derives from the first Thanksgiving feast held by the pilgrims in 1621. The event was a prayer event and dinner to mark the first harvest of the settlers. With this in mind, the final resting place of the ship has huge cultural and historical significance in the story of the birth of America. Harris believed that timbers from the famous vessel had been used in the construction of the barn in Old Jordans. His claim was that he had been attending a funeral in the area when a man told him of the incredible construction material. With interested parties wanting to verify the story, mystery descended as Harris was suddenly unable to trace the man who had relayed the story to him. He conducted an investigation of his own and his research was said to have revealed that local farmers who had shares in the Mayflower in the 17th century may have received its timbers after it was broken up. Harris put this information together with details from the Plymouth Colony's first governor, William Bradford. Harris was a senior member of the local Quaker community and a leading figure within the English Mayflower Club and an author of Mayflower Plays. So was this an embellishment or an outright hoax perpetrated by a man with a keen interest in the subject or just a happy coincidence? As the 300th anniversary of the voyage drew closer in the run-up to 1920, the Mayflower Barn, as the building was being dubbed, caused a sensation. The story gained such credence that during the Second World War, wood from the rafters was used to create a Mayflower Medal for Winston Churchill to give to US President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Before this, in 1921, the Quakers presented part of one of the timbers to Samuel Hills, an American Quaker, who placed it in a chest inside the Pacific Highway Association Peace Portal, today Arch, on the boundary of the USA and Canada. Whatever the truth of the claims, the area has another connection to the birth of the entity that would become the USA, as nearby lies the grave of William Penn, founder of the province of Pennsylvania. So, do you believe the story, or is it merely a hoax by an eccentric obsessive? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Thanks for watching.